A bada bing bada bam. Welcome to this week's Bacon a Mystery, Baking a Murder episode. And you know what they say. They say 24 hours of no sleep, you start experiencing emotional fatigue. You have increased instability. Your ability to solve problems and handle complex tasks diminishes. Then, after 48 hours, you've got severe cognitive impairment, increased risk of depression and anxiety disorders. You might even have heightened risk of infections. But the 72-hour mark, that is where you really start to feel it. This is extremely rare to achieve 72 hours without even a little bit of sleep. Like, I'm not talking 20-minute power naps, not even two hours a night. I'm talking 72 hours raw dog, not a wink of sleep. This is extremely hard to achieve. Usually, you only get severe sleep deprivation in extreme settings. But you can expect high risk of hallucinations, paranoid delusions, as well as increased risks of accidents, injuries, and even death. Today, we're talking about the Korean thriller movie, Sleep. Listen, all of my Korean researchers were telling me how this movie was so good. It's so eerie. It's creepy. It's got all the thriller vibes. I believe in Korea, it was huge at one point. It just recently came out last year in 2023. It is actually the last movie that features Lee sung Yoon and before his passing, Listen, that case really stuck with us. We just covered this case around his death on Rotten Mango, if you guys want to learn more about it. But I wanted to try and not think about what happened while I watched this movie, because at the end of the day, Lee sung Yoon was an incredible actor, and I'm sure that he also wanted to be remembered for his work that he put so much effort and passion into. So let us enjoy it and appreciate it for what it is, which is a really, really good movie. So with some incredibly talented people in it. So let's get started, okay? This movie is wild. This movie is wild in the sense that there's really only two characters the whole freaking time. Okay, there's some side characters, but it's like mainly the same two characters and they're stuck together in the same house all day long. They start Mm. losing their minds. Is this about us right now? (laughs) And they barely leave the house. But tell me why. Tell me why I'm gripped the entire time. I mean, everything about the movie kept me captivated. And you would think that since it's all happening in the same place, I would get sick of it. I would get bored. I would get not engaged. It felt fresh every single second. The actors are also really good. They've got the, they have nailed the crazy behind the eyes look. Oh yeah, which is essential in a horror movie. And this one really, in every single scene, you start seeing a glimpse of what it might feel like when you deal with insane insomnia, sleep disordered, sleep deprivation, sleep walking. So with that being said, this movie revolves around a married couple, Julia and Henry. They've got a quiet little life in Korea. Julia has a corporate job for one of those big companies. Henry is an aspiring actor. And outside of their work life, they don't really have friends. They just hang out with each other. <laughs> Dude, what's going on right now? And on top of that, they're expecting a little chicken nugget soon. She's pregnant? No, they're going to McDonald's. No, they're going to Chick-fil-A. No, they're going to whatever chicken restaurant is not canceled. <laughs> Bro, no, they're pregnant. I'm just kidding. Oh. It was a bad joke. Okay, it was a stupid... <laughs> Bro, the amount of... Like, the fact that I can't name a single chicken nugget brand that's not controversial right now is crazy. Okay, Anyway, they're expecting a little chicken nugget. It's the next chapter of their lives. So this is like the nesting phase. They're trying to settle down. They're trying to build a crib. They're trying to build a family. And this movie starts with them in bed one night. The opening scene is literally a black screen with snoring. (laughs) But it's not, you know, it's not that obnoxious snoring noise like your dad would make. But it's just such a light snore. And I thought it was going to last two seconds before we get into the movie. But it lasts like two minutes and even before we enter into the movie i'm starting to feel claustrophobic like i'm in bed the lights are off i can't see anything but i also can't go to sleep because somebody in the room is snoring that's what it feels like julia and henry are both in bed sleeping or at least julia thought they were sleeping she's half asleep okay the moonlight is shining in through their sheer curtains but it's just one of those nights i guess she's flipping her position and she's like untucking her shirt as she's turning and she seems a little agitated and as she's flipping as she's changing positions she notices that her husband henry not in the bed anymore i was thinking cheating us okay but no it's worse well kind of he's sitting at the edge of the bed like at the foot of the bed facing towards the door facing away from the bed just staring at the open door 
of their bedroom. It leads into the living room, but he's just staring into the dark room. It's weird. It's creepy. It's like, don't do that. What are you doing? What the heck? Mm -hmm. Julia gets up and she rubs her eyes. Opa, what are, you, what are you doing right now? But without turning or even moving a single inch, Henry just says in a deadpan voice, someone's inside. Before Julia can even react, there is a loud thump from outside the room. Her husband, self-defense skills of a grapefruit, is still just sitting there motionless. He didn't even flinch. He did not even react to that thump. And I get that this is a scary movie, but this is like straight out of a scary movie vibe. Julia is trying to squint and move her body to maneuver around him blocking the door frame just to see like can i see what's going on outside it's just really odd why is he not moving why is he not reacting he just said someone's inside and he's not going to react when they hear a thump outside and then boom he just falls back into bed and starts lightly snoring again she found it a little terrifying and a little comical, and she tries to shake him awake. Like, what are, we, what are we supposed to do? But before she can do anything, anything, a big bang comes from outside in the living room. And it sounds like if someone were to slam a cabinet door shut or slam a book down onto the coffee table. And the fear immediately comes right back because someone's inside. And she's like, Opa, Opa, hello, yeah, wake up. But Henry's dead asleep. So she gets up, does not turn on a single light. I have zero idea what this house looks like at this point, okay? Like, why? Like, seriously, sometimes, like, how do the these people just, like... That's what I'm saying. ...not wake up when there's a home intruder? Yeah, or, or, like, how do you not just turn on the light? Oh, yeah, turn on the light. Yeah, or, like, call the cops immediately, turn on the light, mm -hmm. grab a weapon. She's not turning on the light. No, she's just raw-dogging it, going out into the living room just to be like, Hello? So she's doing it for the plot. Yeah, she's <laughs> doing it for us, okay? And she heads into the living room. She walks past the living room couch where she leaves the power drill. What kind of weapon is power drill, by the way? Yeah, in Korea, you're not allowed to have guns. <laughs> but what are you going to do with a power drill? It just <laughs> kind of looks like a gun, but it's not going to do anything. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. I'm trying to debate would I rather have a power drill or a knife. You know what I'd rather have? A knife taped onto a power drill. Okay, now that's a weapon. <laughs> bloop, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So she grabs the power drill. It sounds random, like, why is it next to our couch? But they were, like, in the process of building a crib. Anyway, you get it. She's pregnant. She's about to pop. She grabs the power drill. That's her weapon of choice. And then she hears a thud and a whack. And I'm like, bro, there's so many sound effects in this one. And it sounds like a footstep. And then another book slamming onto the floor. She immediately scans the room. And she sees the laundry room door bouncing open. It's one of those light shutter doors. Have you ever seen those? So if someone walks past it, you see those in like restaurants. Someone walks past it or through mm. the door and the door will keep moving back and forth even if they've already walked past it. It just keeps moving, which is creepy. So Julia walks over. She sees a slipper nudged between the door frame and she's like, that's so strange. And y'all, the amount of noises that she's going to experience tonight. If I were Julia, I would find the nearest sedative a ASAP and hide under the covers. But she's still doing it. She walks into the laundry room, still with the lights off. I have no idea what this place looks like. It looks like the window is slightly open and perhaps the wind is coming in and it starts knocking around the flimsy laundry room door. I don't know. She goes to shut the window and then there's another boom from outside of the room. It sounds like something might have fallen off the laundry machine. And she somehow decides to walk over to see what it is. And in the shadow emerges. Her firstborn child, it's a Pomeranian, a white, fluffy Pomeranian named Gochu, a.k.a. Pepper. She's like, Pepper, what are you doing here? He starts barking, shh, be quiet, go back to sleep. Julia scoops up the fluffy white dog, puts Pepper back into his doggy bed, and she slowly makes her way back to the bedroom because we can tell from the moonlight that she's heavily pregnant, like third trimester, she's ready to burst. And her good old husband is snoring away your pregnant wife could have been fighting a home intruder and you're snoring her weapon are power drills and tide pods and you're snoring julia is just standing over him staring down at him asleep and she lifts her hand up and smacks his little booty because literally why was any of this necessary she slaps him and then thump Okay, another noise. Bro, I'm so sick of these noises already. But like, it'll tone down. Something drops to the floor. And she looks down. It's his slipper. It fell off his foot. Why would he have a slipper if he went to bed with Julia? You don't want your slippers to bed. Mm. Unless 
He's cheating. Oh, what? <laughs> So anyway, Julia doesn't think too deep into it. She's tired. She's pregnant. She just wants to lay on her pregnancy pillow and call it a night. And you know what's really annoying? When there is someone who is the sole reason that you did not get a good night's sleep because they were talking in their sleep, they're kicking in their sleep, they're punching you, they're taking your blanket. And then the next morning, they're all excited and stoked for the morning because while you got not even a wink of sleep, they had the best sleep of their lives. They were hibernating in a slumber while you were remless okay yeah well i wouldn't know the feeling because i'm the annoying sleeper but julia wants to punch her husband in the face the next morning he wakes up bright and early ready to start the day he's all good morning sunshine pushing the curtains open let's wake up uh just five more minutes uh, he sees Julia curling up in the covers and like the sunlight is hitting her face, but he just runs over and he snuggles up to her and he's all, wake up, wake up. He kisses her cheek and eat some breakfast. I'll make you breakfast. Julia reluctantly looks at Henry and wraps her arms around him and he kisses her all over. And as they get their morning started, we see all the little details of their house. I can finally see where they're living, okay? I would say it's... um. You know, it's definitely not giving Richard from Mary, my husband. They live in a small Korean apartment. It doesn't even look like it's in Seoul. It's not run down, but it's definitely older. And that's important to the story. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely an older apartment. And you can tell, like the appliances are older, the, the flooring, like everything feels a little outdated. And he's an actor. Yes. He hasn't made it yet, no. I guess. Okay. No, no, no. So uh, they definitely don't look like they're just rolling around in freshly printed money. But it's cute. Like, there's a lot of natural light that comes in. They've got a lot of plants all over the place. They have so much stuff on the walls. Like, she be putting up pictures, portraits, plaques, like everything. Newspaper clippings of all of the little roles that he's had and everything that he's best known for, even though there's tiny, tiny roles. He's an actor who's not doing so hot, but she's just putting everything up on the the wall she loves it and we see the unassembled crib next to the couch and meanwhile julia's just waiting for this baby to exit her body she wants this parasite to exit the womb okay i'm kidding but she's very happy she's counting down the days on the calendar but like let's be real she's over the pregnancy today is the 25th so she starts counting the days until the little chicken nugget arrives. She sets down the calendar and notices that one of the framed items on the wall is slanted. So she reaches up to fix it. It's a wooden plaque and it says, together we can overcome any obstacle. That's the family motto. So Julia's about to head off to work. She's putting her shoes on at the front door and she's got this like casual boho look. Whatever she's wearing, she's got on like six different layers, a t-shirt, a cardigan, then a scarf. And then she's usually wearing those like baggy flared linen pants and then some comfy shoes. She's doing pregnancy in style. And she puts on her shoes, Pepper, guard the house. She pushes the front door wide open because why wouldn't you? But a woman is waiting outside of it, honestly a little too close to it because she gets whacked in the face by the door and she falls to the ground. And Julia's shocked, but also like, why are you that close to my front door, lady? Oh my God, are you okay? Girlie is now standing face to face with a neighbor and she's got a paper towel smushed into her right nostril. She's a bit older, maybe in her 40s. Her name is Minnie. She's got like curly hair with bangs. She looks very motherly. She looks like she would get one of those giant kimchi buckets and just go elbows deep into making homemade kimchi, just f***ing it up, okay? And at first, Julia looks nervous, like she's about to get sued or something because she just punched her in the face with the door. But the woman came with good intentions. And I guess like a nosebleed is a natural risk when you're trying to visit your neighbor, so... <laughs> she brushes it off and holds her hands out and hands her a box of macarons. Side note, uh, they did address the nosebleed. She's, like I said, paper towel in the nose. It's just a little gift. Please accept it. I'm your downstairs neighbor and I just moved in. My name is Minnie. Okay, so weird because usually the people who already live there would be the ones giving new things to their neighbors, right? Mm. This time it's the other way around. So Julia just awkwardly smiles. What a sweet gesture. I, I bet it's delicious. <laughs> She's a little awkward. They're both just standing in the tiny cramped hallway facing each other, so it's weird. Um, I hope we can get along well as neighbors. Julia's about to walk off because the conversation has obviously reached the end of small talk, but Minnie stops her. If you don't mind, the real reason that I'm here, I, I tried not to bring this up, but I just kept hearing thud noises in the middle of the night and I endured it for about a week without complaining from Monday to Sunday, but it's just been, I've been completely losing my mind. It's just gotten unbearable. At times I feel like I could even hear screaming. Screams? Julia looks around, racking her brain to what that could possibly even be about. 
ah, that yesterday, I, yes, you know what? Regardless, from now on, it won't happen again. I truly apologize, Minnie. Sorry about that. Thank you for being so considerate, Julia. So they both bow and they go about their morning. Julia starts her day in the conference room. She's giving a presentation to her corporate office. And by the end of the day, she's ready. She's exhausted to go home, okay? She takes off her work badge, tidies her office table, and she says bye to everyone. And as she's walking out the giant building, she's on the phone with Henry explaining everything that happened this morning with the neighbor. And she's like, it's honestly unfair. Like, seriously, it's kind of unfair. Actually, it just happened once, you know? Yesterday, just once. But guess what the new neighbor came up here and said? What? That she's been hearing loud noises every night for the past week. Every single night, she said, from Monday to Sunday. She said she's losing it. Are you kidding me? I suppose Korean people do tend to exaggerate. (laughs) So she's on the phone with Henry while she's walking out of the office. And Henry's outside in the car waiting to pick her up. And once he sees her exit the building, he's like, ah, manager Julia Jung, I see you. Actor Henry, oh, I see you too. So they end the phone call and she reaches the car door and he's quickly clearing up the place and pressing play on the radio for her. They're very much in love. Like you can just tell. They're not cheating on each other. I'm so traumatized from marrying my husband. He's not trying to kill her for insurance money. Like everything is chill. And he's like, I go, you worked so hard today. Yes, finally, I can just go home. They hug each other and then they start the drive. Julia is still holding the box of macaroons from that morning, but she's not finished venting about the new downstairs neighbor, Minnie. And Henry's like, hold on. Does this mean the old man, the old grandpa from downstairs moved out? He's gone now? Yeah, he's gone now. Ah, uh, that explains why it's been so quiet lately. What a fucking character that old man was. Seriously. Yes, yeah, seriously. I mean, seriously, seriously, seriously. He was crazy. He starts impersonating the old man. You two must have a wonderful relationship. You guys are at it like wild animals every single night. (sighs) Stop it. That's so... (sighs) With all that bouncing, I can't seem to find any sleep. The woman who took his place is not going to be much easier to deal with. She brought me these macaroons, but I still haven't even opened them. I feel like if I eat them, that's like I'm acknowledging her claims, you know? Henry just smirks because as soon as she said it, she starts hovering over the box and opening it. (laughs) And she's like, I guess I have to suppress my anger somehow. And she starts chowing down on the macaroon. She's definitely preggers, okay? She's just like, she just went from, not saying that pregnant people can't eat mac. Do you get what I'm saying? Like the way she was like, I'm not gonna eat it. And then book. Anyway, when they get back home, they keep the lights off and they're sitting on the couch watching TV and Julia brings up the horror level weirdness that Henry put her through last night. And she's asking Henry, what the does someone's inside mean and why would you say it in your sleep S- someone's inside who 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 would be inside how would i know you said those words in the middle of the night that's what you said someone's inside totally unfazed and then you just like went back to sleep that's nonsense i didn't do that uh, uh, i do think that julia's pregnancy hormones are kicking in because she's like that's nonsense that's nonsense you know it's nonsense the fact that you didn't wake up and help me how could you leave your pregnant wife all to herself like now that i have a big belly you don't even care about me he's like don't be ridiculous he grabs a macaroon out of her hand and go easy on the sugar i think it's making you hormonal it's hard for me too to let go of sugar it's okay, don't cry. Henry starts thinking of all the ways to make her feel better. Ah, someone's inside. That's a line from one of my scripts. He goes into the bag to grab the script and he sits back on the couch and starts scanning through the lines. Let me see which scene it is. But Julia, she's distracted by what's on TV. Oh, look, look, it's your scene, it's your scene. Yeah, they've been watching TV waiting for Henry's scene to come up and Henry gets all nervous. Okay, he's hiding behind Julia's back and I guess it's always cringe to watch yourself on TV, but this is actually kind of cringe. His role in the show is a bodyguard that stands at the hospital door and he bows to the two women that walk in and they ignore the fork out of him and he's just standing in the background in a suit with like one of those Bluetooth earpieces. That was it? That was pretty much it. Oh, he did have one line that was like, if my presence bothers you, I'll step out. (sighs) That was it, like seven seconds in total. And he's like, I look like an idiot. No, it's good. And the suit suits you so well. And there's nothing that doesn't look good on you. (sighs) She's hyping Henry up. But the two decide to go to bed. And once they're about to go to sleep, Julia's laying there reading the script and that one line over and over again. Someone's inside the house. 
Wait, okay. Julia is reading the script? Yeah, because she's like, fine, there is someone's inside the house in a script. So maybe it's not oh. like a totally normal thing. So she to gets to like, explain the, the creepiness. Yeah, because it was just so creepy. So she gets some closure. She turns off the script and she moves her laptop and the script to the side and leans over next to Henry, who's already knocked out of sleep. Opa, are you asleep already? Mm. Do you care that I have a big belly and that I'm not attractive anymore? No. What? Why? I bet there's so many pretty actresses at your job. Mm. Oh. Julia raises her hand to smack him because she's, you know, the unconscious Henry, right? Did not give her the right answer that she's known for. In fact, the answer that you must give must be correct whilst during REM, okay? He must now pay the price. So she stops herself and then just pats him on the cheek instead. Kind of like she's killing a mosquito on his face. Henry does not wake up, but he scrunches his eyebrows. And I mean, she did love tap him kind of rough, but he touches his face because it probably feels like a little sting. And suddenly he starts scratching it. But that scratching becomes really aggressive. Like, I would only scratch this hard, I think, during a panic attack. Honestly, it's really rough. I think if I scratched a bug bite like that, it would start bleeding. He's digging his whole nails, trying to grab as much skin DNA from his cheek as possible under his nails. And he's not even flinching or anything. He's just doing this almost like it's compulsive. Julia's watching him for a moment, but he keeps scratching and scratching. And she starts feeling a little weird about this whole thing. And she tries to grab his hand back. Stop it. Stop it. What are you doing? She puts his hand down and she rubs his, rubs his cheek gently. Go, go to sleep. But once she removes her hand, he starts clawing like sandpaper, like fingernails on a chalkboard, digging into his skin, his cheek, his neck, his jaw. It's all getting more and more raw and he's knocked out. Julia's starting what? to freak out. What is the matter? Stop it. She grabs his hand back again, but this time there's more resistance. He keeps trying to go back to his cheek and eventually she holds his hand down until he calms down and she makes sure that he lays there for a while without touching his cheek and she turns off the bedside lamp and goes to bed. The next morning, Henry is laying like a corpse. He's out. He's asleep. But the alarm is next to Henry, and Julia is the one that wakes up. Honey, wake up. It's time for filming today. Wake up. Julia reaches over, turns on the bedside lamp because it's dark outside, and she slowly sits up on the bed. And as soon as her eyes open all the way, she looks over at Henry, and she freezes. All the layers of skin on his cheek have been scratched off. It looks like someone took a cheese grater and grated ah. his cheek. It looks like Tiger clawed his nails into Henry's face as deep as he could. His neck, his hands, the comforter are all stained with blood, but somehow he's just laying there super peacefully. His hands are folded on his chest like he's having the most peaceful slumber of his life but both of his hands are stained red with blood. Like there's cheek matter on your hands, sir. She reaches out to touch him, but before she does, he springs up and he just looks up at his wife confused and she's not able to speak. She just stares at him. What's wrong? He turns over to shut off the alarm and his eyes are still halfway closed and he goes to rub his face ah. and Julia flinches and he grabs his fully exposed wound and once he touches it, the pain takes over and he screams and then Julia screams and they're both screaming and now they're out of bed on the living room couch and Julia is putting ointment on the wound. But she looks scared to even touch it because like same. How did this happen? Oh, but we got to go to the hospital. Please. So it doesn't matter what happened. He doesn't wake up at night. No. Let's go to the hospital. We need to go. I'm already late. I got to go to work. But let's go to the hospital first. Henry just throws his backpack over his shoulder and says, I'll give you a call later. Kisses her and leaves. How does he work with a bloody face? That's what we're about to find out. Oh. And before he runs out the door, he looks in the mirror. Eh, it's not even that bad. It, it is that bad, guys. It's really bad. Yes, it is. It's really bad. He gives her a big thumbs up and half nervous smile before running out to work. So now Julia is just supposed to pretend like that didn't just traumatize her. She takes a deep breath and she starts taking some steps. But before she even reaches the kitchen, she stops to look down at the floor and she spots blood. A trail of blood that goes all the way from the kitchen to the bedroom. She hears a whimper. Pepper is hiding out in the bedroom underneath the bed. Julia is about to look under the bed, but she sees a bigger pool of dried blood right next to Henry's bedside. Pepper's down there, so she tries to usher Pepper out, and Julia can't see this because of the reflection of the light under the bed, but we see that there's streaks of blood under the bed, as if bloody hands were clawing under the bed to try and reach Pepper all the way back. But couldn't. Couldn't. 
Whoa. And Pepper's acting so strange. Pepper looks so scared. So Julia makes her way to work, but she can't concentrate. So she gets on Naver to search, scratching your face while sleeping. The first article says, this could be a symptom of stress-induced sleep disorder. Visit a sleep disorder clinic. Julia's about to go down a rabbit hole. She starts looking up sleep disorder clinics close by. And that night, Henry does not pick her up from work. She gets home by herself and Julia types in the door code, opens up the door to their apartment. And in the darkness, she sees a figure sitting on the couch. Oh my God, you scared me. Why are you just sitting here? Why don't you turn on the lights? Henry looks over at her. He's holding Pepper in his lap. His cheek is covered with this large bandage and his expression is so, so blank. He doesn't even look sad. He looks, he looks empty. Okay. You're home. He forces a smile, which, I mean, it, it probably hurts. But Julia is, looks genuinely concerned. She takes off her shoes. She walks over to him and falls into his hug. She puts Pepper on the floor and starts checking his wound. Let me see. Henry's wincing in pain. They said that you, you, they couldn't cover it up with makeup? I mean, they could have at least waited until it healed. Why are they so impatient that they had to scrap your role completely? Henry gives a lighthearted chuckle. I mean, what can they do, right? The job wants a man without a crater-sized injury on his right cheek. Tell me about it. And Henry's a little more emotional than Julia realizes. He readjusts himself on the couch and he looks at her. I'm thinking of quitting. He grabs her belly for emotional support, but Julia whacks him on the arm. For what? He leans over the couch and grabs a green paperback book, Real Estate Agent 101, an introductory book. It's not as hard as it seems, they say, the course. She scoffs and rips the book away. Wifey is pissed. Like, you can tell that she's much more strong-willed than the two. Oh, but nobody becomes a renowned actor overnight. You're doing a great job. I've never seen anyone act as good as you. Okay, now, now she's kind of overdoing it. Henry is sinking into the couch. Julia, stop saying things like that. Oh, but I guarantee that you're going to make it big. And these people, they're going to regret treating you like this. Trust me. Henry just scoffs, okay? At least his wife is his number one fan. He goes to grab the real estate book back from her, but she runs off with it. I'm serious. Uh, seriously, just give me the book back. Julia marches over to the wooden plaque on the wall. You know, the one that says, together we can overcome any obstacle. And she points at it like, hello. As long as we stick to this mindset, we have nothing to worry about, okay? Is that clear or not? She marches back to the couch and Henry just grabs his head and hunches over like a little turtle. He pretends to cry, but in the same place, he's also trying to grab the real estate book from the couch, hide it, and he also grabs something else. Surprise! So he brought her some donuts, mm -hmm. which is really cute. Yeah. <laughs> so he's in bed snoring away because I don't know why the fork he sleeps like 14 hours a night when he's got a sleep disorder. Maybe try sleeping less, okay? He always sleeps in the same position, laying on his back with his hands just touching, laying on his stomach, so peaceful. Julia turns around and watches his hands go up and down as his stomach inflates, deflates, inflates, deflates. But for a quick second, his finger flitches. And Julia being the protective mommy that she is, goes into the kitchen, you know, because he must be cooking in his dreams. She grabs a pair of oven mitts and puts them over his hands. There. Now he can't scratch himself, okay? Now she's going to decrease the stress. She's going to have peace of mind for the rest of the night. Julia's up late to finish her work project. She's finished her donuts and she's type, 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 typing away when out of nowhere, Henry just shoots up from bed, gets out of the bed like he's late for work and rushes out the room. Uh, but... Julia's confused. He's acting super strange. It's not even like he's waking up, like he's late for work, but like, oh my God, oh my God. But he's like marching, like he's late for a mission. He's robotic. Julia gets up so fast, she knocks her mug onto the floor, but she's more concerned about what the fork Henry's doing. She walks out into the living room and she can see the fridge lights are glowing in the kitchen and Henry is just standing in front of the fridge. There's just crumbs of food just raining down onto his bare feet. Yeah, he's going fridge both French doors wide open, chewing away with all of these like nasty wet sounds. And Julia walks closer and closer and she peers over his shoulder. Opa, what? But as soon as she sees, her face is frozen. With oven mitts on, Henry is grabbing piece after piece of raw beef from the fridge and gobbling it down like an animal. And then he grabs a raw egg and bites into it like an apple. And like there's yolk just spilling all over his chin. And Julia is gasping, covering her mouth, just completely shocked. I mean, I guess that she's never seen the Liver King though. Because oh. it's giving Liver King vibes, okay? Wait, is he awake or is he asleep? His eyes are open. So I imagine he's sleepwalking, right? Aww. And after the raw egg, Henry goes in for the tray of raw fish and Julia finally has the courage to try and say, Opa, stop! What is wrong with 
idea what's the matter she's holding his arms back but he doesn't even recognize her being there he just holds the fish dangling it over his open mouth and starts lowering it and takes a giant hunk and he keeps choo choo chewing and it looks like henry hasn't even swallowed anything yet from the raw beef to the egg to the raw fish his mouth is just completely full and he just keeps choo choo chewing and julia can't help but gag she runs over the kitchen sink she throws up and while she's head first into the sink which by the way it was like a false alarm she doesn't really like throw up it's just gagging noises she gets Gets up and she sees Henry standing over her, waiting for his turn at the sink. She freaks out, instinctually takes a step back, and he just steps forward, turns on the faucet, and leans under the running water and just taking gulps. Like just um, um. Like drinking the water? Yeah. But, but he the, was waiting on her? And his eyes are fully open and soulless, just staring right at Julia the whole time. He leaves the faucet running and stands up straight and starts heading back into the bedroom. The way he walks is so creepy. It's not sluggish, like he's sleepy and he just woke up. It's very robotic. Julia cannot believe what the fork she just saw. But he takes a few steps forward and realizes that Pepper keeps barking. And he just stares Pepper down until Pepper stops barking. And it was a really weird situation. After that, Henry just walks into bed like he just had a little great bathroom break. Time to go back to bed. And Julia is just trailing after his movements. But when she reaches the bedroom door, Henry's not in bed. He's standing in front of the open window. And without hesitation, he's ready to jump. Oh. Julia freaks out Opa, and runs over and grabs his waist because his whole upper body is now outside of the window. She accidentally grips onto his oven mitt. It slips off, flings her backwards. And now his body is inching closer out the window. Henry is going completely limp. His head is touching the brick wall on the outside. He's about to flip out. He's about to do like a Yui, okay? Julia grabs him by the thighs, finally manages to pull his whole body inside. And I guess his body banging down on the bedroom floor wakes him up. He holds his head, but then he looks at his oven mitt on his hand and he's like, what the fork is going on? Why is it bloody? The window's open. He's on the floor. How, what is going, what? Julia's on the floor. Julia, what's wrong? Are you okay? What's wrong? He grabs her and she just sits up with him and she looks at him. You wanted to jump out the window? What? You told me I had nothing to worry about. Henry just grabs her tighter and looks out the window and he's frantic. Whoa, whoa, don't cry, don't cry. What happened? So it's clear he has no idea what happened. So they both finally calm down. They never get off the floor. Honestly, they're both scared to fall asleep again. He just holds her tight until the morning comes. And this time Julia is like, we're going straight to the hospital. Do you hear me? We're going. So they're going to a sleep clinic, okay? But first things first, the next morning, before they go to the sleep clinic, they got a Harry Potter of the house. Julia walks over to the window that is now completely contained by steel bars. There's a bunch of men in the house installing them over the balcony as well. It's giving Harry Potter at the uncle's house. Every single window that's in the apartment is now jump proof. Julia's mom comes over and she's watching the workers and her mom decides to test how sturdy the bars are, but she's just like shaking them. They're wiggling a little bit. And Julia's like, mom, calm down. Like there's just too much going on. Like I don't need you to be a mess right now. Get a grip lady. Your husband is not the one trying to skydive during our REM sleep. Okay. Time to not be such an attention whore mother. Time for my moment. Oh dear. What kind of situation is this? I mean, seriously, her mom hands Julia a business card. Yong Dang, grandmother of the Sea Palace. <sighs> really, mom? A shaman? Now is not the time! Here, take this. She said to place this under the bed. Julia's not even halfway listening to her shit, okay? But her mom starts rummaging through her bag for this manila envelope. Julia opens it up and it's like this old paper talisman, right? Like it's almost like a poster board. Basically a yellow poster card with red inscription called spirit writings that are written in a circle around the paper. Amulets and talismans are made by the shaman personally. It's supposed to give protection to the home. But Julia is just groaning. Ugh, mom, we don't need something like this. She crumbles up the banner while her mom is like having a conniption. Mom's trying to uncrumble it on the table, trying to flatten it out with all the wrinkles. Do you know how expensive this is? Do you know how much money I spent on something like this? Well, then mom, stop wasting money on things like this. They've never worked anyways. Yes, they have. When? Did the house prices go up or did dad ever come home back to you? I didn't think so. Huh, I swear I'm going to die someday because of you. Huh. So you came all the way here to give me this. 
Meanwhile, Henry's at the doctor and he's just laying on a small bed, just like a light blanket and a pillow. And he's hooked up to all these machines on his face. And there's like a giant strap around his belly. There's a camera facing the bed to monitor his sleep. And he takes out his phone and he turns on the camera and he's looking at himself. Whoa, this is no joke. Hey, honey, come here, Julia, come over here. Look at this. And he's looking into the camera like he's living his Grey's Anatomy fantasy right now. He puts it on selfie mode and they're like, let's do peace signs because, you know, this is all hee hee ha ha fun and games, guys. Anyway, the nurse walks in. The patient should prepare for sleep now. Uh, Oh, yes. Okay, sorry, I'm leaving. So Julia gives him a quick kiss. See you tomorrow, honey. Julia gives him a hug, a thumbs up, and he's spending the night at the sleep clinic. Oh, that's how it works. mm Mm-hmm. By the next morning, the doctor is ready to discuss the results. The doctor turns the screen for them to view. What we're seeing on the screen, while the patient is asleep, many things occur inside the body. We organize them within the graph. And if you look here, when the graph displays this particular pattern, it indicates that you're experiencing REM sleep behavior disorder. They're both sitting there looking stressed, like, what does that even mean? They're holding each other's hands, like, at least we have each other. The disorder is often linked to a chemical imbalance among nerve cells. I know it sounds complicated, but it's surprisingly ordinary. (laughs) You might talk in your sleep or replicate actions that are occurring in your dreams. For example, scratching your face or waving your arms and legs. If you prefer, you can visualize it in this brochure. He slides them a brochure. You might find yourself sleepwalking or at times even going to the fridge and grabbing something to eat. It's exactly the same. It's identical. That's exactly what he was doing, doctor. Not going to lie. The doctor sounds like way too happy right now. He's cheesing pretty hard. And honestly, I'm really skeptical about it. He's like a car salesman more than a doctor. But Julia is ready to fix all of Henry's problems once and for all. Is there a treatment for a disorder like this? Yes, there is. So the doctor gives them a couple of instructions that they need to do as soon as they get home. First and foremost, ensure that your house becomes a safe environment. That way, even if he sleepwalks, the risk of injury is minimal, preventing a potential incident. So the first thing they do when they get home is pretty much baby-proof. Henry's putting rubber lining across the dining table. Julia's putting all scissors, knives, blades into a wicker basket, putting them into a locked cabinet. But more importantly, you'll have to improve your lifestyle. For dinner, Julia's cooking up a healthy meal of cooked fish, tofu, eggs, spinach, kimchi, rice. Julia starts writing down the daily rules for Henry so he stays on track at every moment of the day. In order to prevent these types of incidents from happening again, first, alcohol. It can lead to serious sleep disorder, so you must quit alcohol immediately. Henry goes to the fridge and they start emptying out the beer bottles down the drain. And Julia's like, you know what? We should have done this a long time ago. Why should I be the only one to stop drinking? Because I'm pregnant. Now, if possible, go to sleep promptly at 10 p.m. So Henry calls up his agent. Hey, I'm calling about the late night filming on the 5th. See, I've been dealing with some health issues lately, so I'm afraid I won't be able to make the late night filmings for a while. Well, I know. I'm sorry. It's just beyond my control. Sorry. Julia X's out the days that he'll no longer be working. And afterwards, she tapes onto the wall the 10 commandments of sleepwalking disorder that they need to follow every single day that the doctor told them to do. And the paper says, let's get rid of REM sleep behavior disorder. And finally, the doctor tells them the last instructions. Other than that, darken the room, turn up the AC to avoid overheating and avoid looking at screens before bedtime. That's also beneficial. But what remains the most important is take the prescribed medicine that I've given you. So it's almost bedtime. Julia is sitting on the floor in front of Henry. She opens up the pill bottle, hands him a large, giant green pill, and he starts taking it. And they're just kind of looking at each other. And in this cute little moment, they're just goofing around and you just know shit's about to go down. So Henry takes the pill and he leans back. And soon enough, it's time for bed. So Henry plops into the bed, bandage still on his cheek. He snuggles up in the little comforter and looks over at Julia, who's lying there next to him and gives him a big thumbs up. He takes a breath and Julia turns off the light. And what do you know? It worked. The sun's shining. The crib that's next to them is in their room. It's made fully and it's the next morning. And Julia's looking over at Henry, who's still peacefully sleeping. No blood on his hands in the same position and she's got a big smirk on her face like what the fork do you know it actually worked okay Hmm. she gets up she looks over at the calendar and she picks up the empty food bowl for pepper pepper (sighs) no response she walks over to the kitchen and she sees bags of food and groceries dropped onto the floor like frozen dumpling bags on the floor that's weird and it's empty so someone ate frozen dumplings 
but there's white dog hair all over it. Julia pans over to the closed refrigerator doors, and she's got this terrifying gut feeling, and she slowly opens the freezer door, and her eyes are locked in, and she stares for a few seconds before she says, Henry's still sound asleep while she's screaming at the top of her lungs. He just shifts his head from one side of the pillow to another. He doesn't wake up. He just slightly smiles like he's having a pleasant little freaking dream. There's a frozen pepper in there. Pepper dead. Pepper frozen. R.I.P. Pepper, you were a real one. The, the dog was like <sighs> intact though. Yeah, but frozen. But frozen. Wow. <laughs> anyway, time has passed at this point. So we get a flash forward in the movie and the sleep disorder has settled down. Not all the way, but enough to manage. Like he's no longer out here killing puppies. Something to note, even though Julia is terrified about what Henry's capable of while he's sleepwalking. Wait, 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 wait. So yeah. the husband shoved the dog into the freezer. Yeah, and then they just like kind of move on. They just moved on. <laughs> they just, like, she stayed with him and they just move on. Just... Nothing else happened. Just... Yeah. <laughs> just another eventful night. Just another day. Okay. Yeah, just another night. Just another dollar. Just another pepper. Just another dog. <laughs> Pass the salt because pepper's dead. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, anyway... Somehow she manages to still love this man. I mean, look, they're they're trying to make it work. After the pepper incident, though, it looks like Julia had enough time to grieve, move on. She's accepting the fact that Henry is not intentionally doing these things. It's a medical disorder. Did you know that most home break-ins happen in broad daylight? That is not a Google statistic. That's according to the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation and their property crime data. And now that it's spring and the days are getting longer and all I can think is, does that mean that it's more likely for intruders to break into my home? Because if statistically they happen in broad daylight and daytime is longer now, honestly, the odds are probably slim because we've got so many people in this house all the time. But you know me, I like to cook up all these wild scenarios. That may be Stephanie math, but I still feel so much safer knowing that I have Simply Safe home security. There are lots of things that I want to protect inside my house. And I'm not just talking about my valuables. My dogs are here. My nieces are often here. My home is kind of like the unofficial family hangout spot. We've got the whole RM team in Atlanta here. So like making this a safe space matters a lot to me. Simply Safe was named best home security systems of 2024. So I don't know what else could possibly make me feel safer than the best home security of 2024. Simply Safe offers advanced technology that protects every room, window, and door of your house while cameras keep watch for suspicious activity 24-7. So for less than a dollar a day, you can get 24-7 professional monitoring of your home, which means trained professionals will constantly be on the lookout for intruders. And if an intruder breaks into your home, Simply Safe's agents will use the smart alarm indoor camera to communicate with the intruder in real time to scare them off. Simply Safe offers everything you need at half the cost of traditional home security. You've got the option to install their security system yourself, which is honestly super easy to do, or Simply Safe will send professionals to do it for you. And my personal favorite part is that Simply Safe even keeps your money safe with their 60-day risk-free trial. You're literally not losing anything. You can get a full refund within 60 days if you decide Simply Safe doesn't fit your needs. Or you'll end up discovering what a good night's sleep feels like because Simply Safe will let you sleep easier. Protect your home today. My listeners get a special 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. Just visit simplysafe.com slash baking. That's simplysafe.com slash baking. There's no safe like Simply Safe. So now we're transported into the future where Julia's in labor and delivering with four doctors just hovering over her. She's yelling at the top of her lungs, trying to push! And she's grabbing Henry's shirt, and we know the drill here. So after a few hours, Henry's holding their baby girl, Jenny. Let's just call her Jenny. Henry and Julia, Jenry. <laughs> anyway, holding their baby little girl in his arms, and they just look like a cute little happy family time to feed the baby again so henry leaves the room julia's in the hospital bed feeding the baby and her mom is sitting there cutting an apple with a knife i don't know why julia feels the need to explain but she does she just keeps telling her mom that she's got a bigger better plan to tackle henry sleepwalking but her mom is adamant that they're not gonna fix this problem that's too big of a problem Julia is trying to stand on her husband's side. The more that I think about it, the more that I realize it's not Henry's fault, mother. It's not like he's doing it intentionally. Hate the sin, not the sinner. Is that what you're saying? Are you serious right now? It's not even a sin, mom. It's a, it's, it's hate the disorder. It's sleepwalking. 
I asked around and everyone agreed. There is a legitimate reason for divorce, you know? This oh. is it. <laughs> Stop trying to feed me nonsense. I mean, your happiness comes first, Julia. I was able to raise you fine without a father and you had everything that you needed. Henry's receiving treatment. He's gonna be okay, mom. The issue here isn't whether he receives treatment or not. Don't worry, mom. We've got it figured out, okay? We're gonna come up with a plan and everything is gonna be okay. <sighs> well, I'm just saying, if the medical approach doesn't work, he'll have to get treated spiritually. So now eat. Like, are you even a Korean mom if you're not shoving slices of fruit into your child's mouth without consent? So Julia's discharged. She's in the back of Henry's car holding the baby. They're dropping their mom off and saying their goodbyes before heading home. And when they arrive at their house, Henry takes a deep breath, parks the car. And before he gets out, he shows Julia his phone. I just need to show you something. And it's a studio apartment for super cheap, just so Henry can sleep there and not bother her. And now that their baby Jenny, you know, is all here, he doesn't want to take any chances. A few days ago, I dropped by. The structure is solid. There's a bathroom in the bedroom. The monthly rent is around $340. It's five minutes away from here. And it, it sounds good, no? What are you saying? I'm going to be sleeping elsewhere for a while, Julia. No, I don't like it. I mean, sleeping at home will keep us both on edge. We can easily solve the problem just by doing this. But then who's going to watch the baby? Exactly. <laughs> but also, we agreed to overcome any problems that come our way together. It's not supposed to be easy. Julia, what are you saying? Do you know why it's so easy? Because giving up is easy. A couple shouldn't give up so easily. How is this considered giving up, Julia? I'm telling you, that's what it is. You're giving up. Henry doesn't agree, but he realizes there's no fighting her. So Julia's really stubborn about this, being in the family home together. It's like he killed Pepper, but at that point, she's still in love with him. So you really got to give it to her. Dedication to the family unit is her thing. It's her jam. So they walk back into the apartment unit and Julia walks in first with babies in her arms and Henry is walking up behind her and they've got this whole list of things that they're going to improve in their life. First step, the bell. The bell's purpose is to wake up the guardian. When the bell rings, the guardian who woke up must slowly guide their patient back to bed. Henry drills a door chime onto the top corner of the bedroom door. Now, anytime it moves, the bell chime will go off. And once it's assembled, he starts playing with the chime. Isn't this too quiet? But Julia grabs the power drill and says, I'm slowly guiding you back to bed, patient. Henry plays along and they're like flirting. And then he throws a sleeping bag onto the bed. Next, step two. He gets into this poop colored sleeping bag. He literally looks like a giant chunk of excrement or like a really full caterpillar, but he gets inside and shuffles around. Oh, I really won't be able to move on my saw. I'm serious, Julia. Like, look at this, right? Look at it. Julia is looking at him, but she's like slowly going from looking at him with love to looking at him with resentment. And he's like, I know you're tired. So lay down. She puts Jenny into the crib next to their bed and she lays down, but she didn't realize that she's actually going to fall asleep. She wakes up from her nap and walks over to the window. Thankfully, it's not nighttime because the night scenes in this movie, stressing me the fork out. It's still light outside and there's neighbors walking around outside the building. And for some reason, Julia feels compelled just to like stare out the window. So depressing. There's steel bars covering her window, which reminds her just how much her life has changed. There's kids running around after school and she's fixated on this one kid in a blue jacket, a little boy named Jimmy. Jimmy's like eight or nine, okay? He's the son of the busted nose macaroon lady downstairs. You know, remember from the beginning? He's walking with his mom and he's got a leash in his hand and it's a white fluffy Pomeranian. And she's like, trauma, trauma. So what does she do? She goes downstairs. She's wearing her house slippers, a blue robe. She looks like she either just woke up from a nap or she has not slept in three days. I don't know. There's like a slight tinge of crazy in her eyes and they're starting to get red. She's walking down the front steps when she runs into Minnie, who's like annoyingly chipper. Oh my God, hello. Jimmy, you have to say hi to the nice lady. She's our upstairs neighbor. Oh, the noisy neighbor? Minnie elbows her son so that he doesn't say anything else that's out of pocket. Hello, <laughs> yes, yeah. But Julia doesn't even look at them. She's looking down and then she squats down to her knees and she gets face to face with the Pomeranian. And she just starts caressing the little Pomeranian and the ID tag, which like, hello, what are you doing? But Minnie keeps chirping on. Ah, we adopted a puppy too. My son wouldn't stop telling me how much he loved your puppy. So we got ourselves an identical Pomeranian. 
Julia's not even listening. The first thing that she does is grab for the dog's collar. It's like 1% of her was hoping that it would say Pepper, but she looks at the name and it's Andrew, which like what a dog name, okay? <laughs> Minnie is painfully oblivious to Julia's vibe right now. Julia's eyes are glazed. They're red. Her face is giving empty, depressed, tired. She wants to get out of here. She just wishes that Pepper was here right now. But Minnie's all, oh my God, I just realized. You gave birth, didn't you? You have your baby at home? Oh my God, congratulations. It must have been the biggest challenge ever. You know, when I gave birth to... Julia just looks straight up at Minnie. Eyes bloodshot, eye bags for weeks. It's an eerie vibe. Minnie literally stops talking because of how creepy it is. Julia just U-turns, walks back into the apartment, and the place where the wedding picture used to hang on the wall, now empty. The picture frame is leaning on the floor with the rest of the storage. And it's got nothing to do with her marriage. She still loves Henry. It's just the wedding picture has Pepper in it. Anything with Pepper, she can't look at. This is interesting, right? But it's, it's, in the beginning, I was more scared of Henry, which I still am. But I feel like Julia is starting to lose her mind too. At night, Julia, I guess, doesn't feel comfortable sleeping in the same room with Henry, which makes sense. She's sleeping in the living room, but in the dark, just on the couch with her laptop in front of her. Jenny is sleeping in the crib next to her and she starts looking through a slideshow of Pepper's photos. It's like a little mini funeral right in her head. Pour one out for my girl Pepper. And it's kind of cute because her dog, you know, RIP. But it's also kind of creepy because she's just sitting there. Click. A motionless face staring at Pepper. Click. Eyes red, emotionless staring at Pepper. Click. Clenched jaw, emotionless staring at Pepper. Click. And then she comes across a picture of Henry. And Henry sleeping on the couch with Pepper in his arms. Henry is asleep in the picture. But Pepper is wide-eyed looking straight at the camera. She turns back and looks at the freezer. Which, like, side note. Do you think they got rid of Pepper or, like, he's still in the freezer? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. What's going on? He's, she's just like... Looking at old photos of Pepper. But she looks crazy. Like, she's not crying. She's just emotionless. Oh, kind of eerie. Yeah. Mm. And then what looking at the freezer. About? I don't know. Mm. I mean, at this point, I guess the most rational thing is to amp up your paranoia, right? So she goes online and looks up the most severe sleepwalking cases and all the articles that she can find. Tragedy due to sleepwalking. Woman kills husband and daughter. Sleepwalking crimes spark bedtime terror. All the headlines have a picture attached to them. And when she's scrolling, one catches her eye. It's a baby. Man kills 18-month-old daughter by slamming her head into a wall while having a nightmare and sleepwalking. She can hear little baby Jenny moving around in the crib and she's looking stressed. She's also looking determined. Like she's never going to let anything happen to Jenny. She looks like she would kill Henry for Jenny, but she also wants to make it work. Like she wants to love her whole family. It's really weird. So Julia's really going through it. Meanwhile, Henry's in bed snoring. I thought he's in sleeping bags. Yeah, in a sleeping bag on the bed. Oh, he's so he's still like caterpillar. Yeah, and he's snoring okay it's giving newborn parents why is the dad peacefully sleeping like i just want to this is what i have to say okay men who are out there if your partner is going through it and they are not sleeping you better not look like you're enjoying your sleep i always tell him that if i'm like if i'm like going through life please don't ever look peacefully asleep like look stressed in your sleep you know what i mean like wrinkle your eyebrows a little bit because because then i'm like why are you so peaceful? Yeah. But what's crazy is when he's stressed, I'm like, okay, good night. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Kind of. Julia walks into the locked bedroom and she's just standing by the side of the bed, watching over her husband's peacefully sleeping body. Because why the fuck are you peacefully sleeping? She looks like she's debating whether or not she wants to kill him. And over on the bedside table, she notices the pill bottle. Oppa, did you take your medicine? Mm. Did you take it? Julia's not going to take any chances. She grabs the bottle and force feeds one into his mouth while he's still sleeping. And then he's only supposed to have one a day. But then she grabs another one and forces it into his mouth. Like, listen, this is why everybody needs to sleep with mouth tape, but I digress, okay? (laughs) Two. And finally, now after drugging her homicidal dog-killing husband, she's ready to sleep. But instead of laying in her comfortable bed or on the couch, she's sleeping on the living room floor next to Jenny's crib. And she has it set up so that if Henry wakes up, he has to walk over Julia to get to Jenny's crib. But it doesn't even matter because Julia is not sleeping. She's just pacing the room back and forth, back and forth, pitter-patter. She walks over to Jenny's, checks that she's still in there, still asleep, very much alive. Why is she so terrified? This is her husband after all. Maybe the news articles are getting to her. But like, yeah, okay, fine. 
He killed the dog. But it's natural parental instinct to not do that to your child, right? As she's pacing the living room, you can see all the little picture frames and knickknacks. They're all gone. The walls are bare. The only things left are the family motto plaque and the piece of paper with the doctor's rules for sleepwalking. She's trying to calm her nerves, but she can't. So she grabs Jenny and quietly goes into the bathroom and locks the door. Yeah, she brought a blanket, a pillow, and her baby. She's laying in the bathtub. It's the only place where she feels comfortable because she's locked in now. But as soon as she closes her eyes, ding, her eyes open. The lights are off. She's just in the cold tub. She hears slow, quiet footsteps walking towards the bathroom, which again, what is there technically to be afraid of, right? She's living with her husband. It's not like it's an intruder. And then the bathroom door handle turns halfway, but it's stuck because it's locked. Henry is outside the bathroom trying to open the door. He's twisting it over and over again and it won't budge and it's dramatic. It's like, tush, 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 like trying to shake the handle. Julia is not even moving a single muscle. Even if she did, where would she go? She's trapped in the freaking bathroom. She's praying that he doesn't find his way in, but she also doesn't stop staring at the door and she hears, doom, doom, oopa. And then now he's banging on the door. Henry can't speak now because he's determined to get inside. It sounds like he's running like a quarterback to the wooden door, slamming his whole body against the wood door. Uh, at that point? Divorce. Oh Julia's God. holding their baby protectively and her whole body is shaking and he just keeps banging on the door and julia is begging the baby because now the oh, baby's crying oh. the baby's crying and she's like don't worry it's okay mommy's right here please don't cry please don't cry and there's just like bang bang just slamming the body weight at the door and then nothing silence after that moment julia slowly opens the door because that's rational and she peeks out into the living room and when she cracks the door open she hears a weird noise she looks out and henry is there with his back to her Standing over the crib, peeing on the side. Peeing on to the side of the crib? Yeah. What? Yeah. Well, at least he's not peeing into the crib, right? Maybe he missed. Oh. Yeah, by the time the sun slowly starts coming up, Julia has not slept a wink, and now she's just... She's just standing over Henry the next morning. It's pouring rain behind her. It's like this intense jealousy and resentment that he can sleep for fucking 14 hours straight, stress her out, make her feel like he's going to kill their child. And she's up all night fighting for her life. Like, make it make sense. Make it make... If that were you, I'm pumping Red Bull into your veins, okay? Like, you're not sleeping. You're not sleeping. Or you're sleeping during the day. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't even make sense. And they just had a baby. Why is anybody sleeping? She's got dark circles. Her eyes are fully round. They're not even just dark circles. It looks like she poured acetone into them. They look swollen, red, uncomfortable. She's looking at the love of her life, but her face is emotionally numb. She's for sure on the verge of a breakdown. In her brain, like the ticking noise of the clock, the rain hitting the window is consuming her. It's overwhelming. It's overstimulating. She's going to freak out soon. And she remembers the first doctor's visit, how the doctor was so positive about his stupid ass treatment plan, his ugly ass laugh, and how she can see the yellow stain on his lab coat. Does he even know what he's talking about if he's walking around with his lunch on his white coat? And she decides to revisit the treatment plan. So when he wakes up, they go straight back to the office. Now, good Henry is back. He's pulling out papers that he's printed out and he's showing them towards the doctor. I did some research and I compared to the current medication. Many people claim that this one, iMicrofam, is significantly more effective in stopping sleepwalking. So I was wondering if you could change my prescription. The doctor looks at the piece of paper. As of now, evaluating your current medication's effectiveness or changing medications would be premature. Imicrofam is a highly potent drug. It's only prescribed as a final and last resort. Let's wait a bit longer and see how things progress. Bro, he already killed the dog. Yeah, and you can What's tell that. Next? Exactly. Julia's starting to panic. She's holding her newborn baby in her arms, red circles around her eyes. Her eyes are twitching, staring at the jolly folly doctor like, no, you don't get it, sir. But she's trying to keep it under wraps. Doctor, I slept in the bathroom last night. The doctor gives her a... We followed all your instructions, but I fully understand your frustration, ma'am. The REM sleep behavior disorder. There are no signs of improvement. I understand, but there's no guarantee that these symptoms will disappear, let alone having a precise time frame. What? 
However, I've prescribed a treatment that has proven effective in many cases before you. Are you saying he might carry on like this forever? It varies from patient to patient. So don't lose patience and let's see how before he finishes, Julia grabs Henry's pill bottle and bops him on the head with it. Literally throws it <laughs> at his head. Yeah, the doctor is looking shook. Wait, she threw it on doctor's head? Yeah, it's just like bonk. <laughs> yeah. And Henry is like, oh my God, doctor, are you okay? I'm so sorry, are you okay? And Julia is fuming. She gets home and under her breath, she is convinced this plan is not gonna work. She's holding Jenny, pacing around back and forth while Henry's sitting at the dining table, going through all the sleepwalking printouts like he's solving Newton's laws of physics. Sir, just like tie yourself up BDSM style before bed. It's not that complicated, okay? What? Yeah, why can't they just tie him up? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, why that's what I'm saying. That? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Should I call her? Like, hello, Julia? Yeah, the problem solving skills is concerning. It's very alarming. Yeah, it's definitely weird. Yeah. Like, uh, take shifts. Why do you both have to sleep at night? Yeah, exactly. He should be up. Exactly. Just yeah. or like get a new place yeah. or just like stay at the sleep disorder place. Yeah. Or tie yourself up BDSM yeah. style. Yeah, send him to sleep with the doctor. See what what happens then. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jenny is pacing the living room though, okay? What a f quack. What an asshole. Stupid little asshole. What do we do? Jenny starts crying. The baby's crying, okay? Honey, Jenny's crying. I said, what do we do now? Henry's voice starts to crack and he's trying to figure out a plan. He has all these documents spread out on the table and he's desperately looking for a solution, but there is no solution. Look, this says it's uh, for RBD patients prescribed iMicrofam. The recovery rate is exceptionally high. The way I see it, we're on the right path. In any case, you don't have to worry anymore. I'm going to figure out a solution somehow. <sighs> She's not convinced. There's no plan and everything they tried sucks. So she gets out of the house, grabs a pack of cigarettes and walks to the back apartment building and just starts smoking it up. She's stressed. Okay. She's not having a good time right now. That night, Henry tries to sleep in the car. He's like bringing his sleeping bag into the car. But like, can I just say something? If you're a sleepwalker, don't sleep in the car. We don't want sleepwalkers driving around on them dirty streets in the middle of the night. Are you kidding me right now? Like you ought to be joking. But Julia, he, she knows that he's doing some dumb stuff, okay? So she goes out to the car, is knocking on the window, like, come inside. And he's all like, but, but. And she's like, no, just get your booty inside the house. Now they decide, instead of locking herself in the bathroom, why don't they lock Henry inside the bedroom? So they put a padlock on the bedroom door from the outside. And Julia starts yanking the doorknob to make sure that it works. And she's really putting her whole body into it. And honestly, Henry's kind of sad watching from behind. Because, you know, it's like, it's embarrassing and it's sad. Like the fact that his wife needs to lock him into the bedroom because she's so scared of what he's going to do. Like he's a monster and he can't even help it. So that night they stand on opposite ends of the door frame, sleep well, and they wave goodnight. And Julia goes over to the framed motto. Together we can overcome any obstacle. And she just stares at it. Then she looks at the 10 commandments of sleep disorder and she yanks it off the wall because Plan A, because when all else fails, call your fork and mommy. The next morning, an all black BMW drives up to Julia and Henry's apartment. A woman in black high heels gets out the driver's seat and Julia's mom gets out the passenger seat. Bruh, the two are a sight. The driver has a super short haircut, not like a bob, but like an edgy pixie cut, but it's like gray, but not gray because she's old. Gray as in she dyed it gray. Yeah, K-pop idol vibes. She's got a bit thicker black eyeliner and red lipstick, hoop earrings. Julia's mom looks like every Karen at the Korean church, faux <laughs> fur coat, ajuma curly permed bob hair. And they stare into Julia's apartment window. It's time. They ring the bell. Julia and Henry both stand at the door. Julia's mom decided it is time for this. Greet her, everybody. She's the shaman I told you about, the grandmother of the sea palace. This is my daughter and her husband. The shaman is standing there while they're bowing and she kind of looks up behind them into their apartment. She doesn't even look at them. Hmm. She looks like a badass. Red fingernails, leather jacket. Shaman doesn't even say anything. She just takes her shoes off, rushes past them into their house, puts her purse out on the dining table and pulls out some of the things from her shamanistic Mary Poppins bag. Incense, handbells, a sword. Why does the shaman need a sword? I don't know. She dramatically unsheaths it like a mini samurai sword and she places it on the table. Did she like get some water in her mouth and then poof, onto the no. sword? No, she didn't do that? Oh. She places it on the table while Julia's mom 
and Julia, who's clutching Jenny in a blanket swaddle, and Henry just stand there staring at her, and she looks at them, makes nonchalant eye contact, lights the incense, grabs the handbells, and starts shaking them. Side note, they have such a distinct sound. It's not like Christmas bells. It feels very scary for some reason. She's shaking them, and she starts walking towards the living room area. She uses one hand to yank the curtains closed, making the entire room dark. Then she moves on to the bedroom, then the bathroom, where she stops abruptly in the bedroom, and she stops shaking the bells. She stops shaking that ass. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> but she's like not shaking the bells anymore. And it's like she reached this invisible border. She says to nobody in particular, ghosts can easily latch onto people while they're asleep. Since the spiritual energy weakens during sleep, they exploit that weakness and find their way into the body maliciously. The family are just watching from the doorway. Like, the fork is this lady saying? But they're all intrigued because at this point, they're desperate. The shaman starts closing the curtains in the bedroom and shaking her handbells again. And she's staring at the handbells because it's telling her something. She went from casually shaking them like jingle bells to suddenly it looks like she's not even in control of the handbells. Like, they're shaking on their own. And she's looking at it like it, her arm is not her own arm. And she stares at it and starts walking, beelining it, booking it. The shaman goes straight to Henry, who's back out in the living room holding Jenny. And the handbells lead her directly to him. She looks up at him and she starts smirking. She turns her head to Julia and her mom. Look, looks like you have two men living with you. The ghost has latched onto your husband, but you're the one who brought it in. He's lingering around the baby's mother. Julia's mom looks shook to the core. Julia and Henry are like, is this crazy but they also like kind of half believe her julia is peak mom vibes right now long cardigan hands held together in front of her she looks a little scared who the ghost why why do you think you're young and beautiful that's probably why <laughs> she looks over at jenny the baby and does the tongue pop thing that's like which is like poor kid and then she <laughs> she pushes henry's chin up and inspects his face people are ghosts they're all the same repulsive and without even a warning, she pulls up Henry's shirt from the back. Are you itching anywhere else on your body? Here, here, here. What the fork are you doing? But the shaman doesn't stop. She's looking around at his ankles, his arms. And Julia and her mom are just standing on the side watching all of this happen. He's squirming around while he's holding baby Jenny. And all of a sudden, the shaman stands still. And then starts shaking the f*** out of the handbells in front of Jenny's face. The infant. Henry's like, what's the matter with you? Stop it. He's trying to shield the baby away from the shaman, but the shaman won't budge. She almost looks possessed. She keeps shaking it faster and louder and faster and closer to the baby's face. Baby Jenny is crying from all the noise and the shaman stops. She looks down at the ground and then she looks back up and stares directly at Julia. Without dogs barking, without children crying, I want to live in peace with no one but you. That's it. The end. Um, yeah, I would be so pissed. Like, lady, you can't come in here and do all of that and not fix my problem. Yeah. But the shaman is like, OK, I'm going to pack up my bags now. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? She just turns around and gives them one last piece of advice. If it's not driven out quickly, you're about to secure your fate. Julia's mom nags at Julia from the side. I told you we should have reached out to her earlier. We can do a ritual. The shaman shakes her head. I need to know its name to carry out an exorcism ritual. Everybody stops to look at the shaman. Name? Like, wh wh what do you mean name? Julia is confused. A beauty like you must have left many men brokenhearted. Brokenhearted? Yeah. Take your time and think. Without the name, I can't drive it out. She walks past Julia and hands her two envelopes. Two in the bedroom, one in the living room. Place them out of sight. The shaman is walking towards the front door. She's about to reach for the handle, but she turns around one last time, glances at Henry, her fist clenches, and she chucks a handful of beans at Henry. Like, what the fork, lady? Like, I'm sorry. It's creepy. No, it really is. The movie is creepy. But imagine paying a woman to come shake some bells in your house, and before she leaves, she gives you the stink eye and then throws a handful of, like, dried barley seeds, <sighs> barley beans at you and all over the floor for you to clean... <laughs> We're about to fight. And then the shaman turns to Henry's ghost and says, and you better get ready. I'll be coming for you soon. The mom runs out the door with the shaman, just leaving her daughter in the dust because that black BMW is her right home. And they, <laughs> yeah, they just like leave. Julia and Henry are confused. Henry's like, well, this is, um, <laughs> Jenny, you're not actually scared, right? Jenny laughs it off too. Like, 
shamanism. What a crazy thing. But you can tell she's taking it a lot more seriously than Henry because that night after Henry and Jenny go to sleep, she's making a list of all the guys that she used to date that she could have possibly have any sort of intimate relations with and finding them up on Instagram. Because if they're alive, they're not haunting her. They got to be dead. She's looking for all the dead lovers. She can't find any. What's going on? This is not easy to have dead exes. I guess it'd be more alarming at that age to have copious amounts of dead exes, right? Anyway. <laughs> so after all of that, she's holding, you know, baby Jenny in her arms. And I think she was changing her diaper. She ends up finding a little barley bean between her shirt. Hmm. It's like a sign. Oppa. Hmm. Henry's in bed again. <laughs> ah, get this man up. <laughs> and he's like, why are you still awake? What if... What if it's actually true? If it's true, what are you referring to? What if there's actually a ghost? <laughs> I go, you are something, okay? You're onto something. No, I mean, just hypothetically. I'm just asking hypothetically. Like, what if there's a ghost for real? You have two men living with you. You believe that? Come on, I I'm being serious. Henry thinks this is so unserious. Let's say a ghost has actually latched on. Who would it be? Well, how would I know? Oh, the, the, the guy, the what's the name? The, the guy, the one that you dated before me? That one? Could it be him? <sighs> no, they're all alive. I looked them all up. You looked them all up? So you're not speaking hypothetically, huh? So this is not hypothetical. You actually believe it. Julia turns her back to him and it, she's in bed now. I don't know why the fork she's sleeping in that bed again, but she just turns off the light to get ready for bed. She's like, forget it. Let's just go to sleep. No more crazy thoughts, honey, just sleep. But as they sit in the darkness, about to close their eyes, the downstairs neighbor's new dog starts barking and they can hear it like it's right outside their bedroom door. And Julia is like, ugh, so this is how noisy it was, huh? Yeah, the old man downstairs made it tough for us because he was so upset about Pepper. Yeah, especially for me, after you left for work, he'd be like, is it that hard to silence your stupid dog? Let me get some sleep. Aren't you supposed to handle like one single dog? <laughs> but for an old man, he was really fond of you. Yeah, he really did like me, didn't he? I wonder oh. what he's up to. No, it's the old man. <sighs> Henry <sighs> is just drifting into sleep. But Julia, Julia, the next morning, she's on to something. She walks one flight of stairs down with a box of dog food and knocks on Minnie's door. The neighbor. Oh, hello. Oh, you're home. Uh, what a relief. Well, what is all of this? Oh, it's nothing. I just brought some spare dog food. Nothing? This is amazing. How thoughtful of you. Do you want to come in? Sure. She ushers her into her apartment, which is honestly pretty cute. I thought it would be creepier because Minnie was giving me creepy vibes, but it's actually cuter than Julia's place. It's more inviting, more homey, like an old Korean ajuma way. Like if you went to her house, you would want some hot Cheetos, but she'd be like, oh, sorry. All I have are these hard tin biscuit cookies that taste like sandpaper. And you'd be like, what the fork? Anyway, Minnie ushers her to the sofa. Have a seat. Jimmy, come say hello. While Julia's sitting there, she hears tap, tap, tap. Footsteps. She looks around and then she looks up. It's from upstairs. They can hear everything. It's probably her husband, but they can hear everything. Huh. Minnie hands Julia a mug of tea. Um, Minnie, before you moved in, there was an older man living here. Would you happen to know him? The man? What, what about him? <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I guess it wouldn't make sense for you to know him. Oh, no, no, no. I, I do know him. He's my father. Oh. All of a sudden, Julia pans over to the TV and she sees a huge family portrait of Minnie, her son, Jimmy, and Minnie's father, the old man, the angry grandpa that lived downstairs. Minnie looks intrigued, but also slightly embarrassed. Oh, did he give you a difficult time? My dad has always been so exhausting. Did he bother you a lot? <laughs> No, um, no, 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 no. Is your father still alive? What? That's, no, I was just wondering if he's in good health and wanted to see how he's doing now. Ah, um, but before Minnie can respond, her son Jimmy, who's standing there in the living room holding their white dog, he announces, oh, grandpa's dead. In here. And he points to the bathroom. And just for extra good measure, in case the nice guest wanted to see his place of death, he opens the bathroom door and steps inside. Minnie looks taken aback by her own child. Like, what the fork is wrong with this kid? Jimmy, oh my goodness, are you serious right now? Julia just stares into the bathroom door that's now closed. And everything is starting to click. What was your father's name? 
When she gets back to the house, just one floor up, the list of names that is of everyone has been crossed out except for Grandpa Park. Julia has found her ghost. So now she's sitting on the couch and she's looking over at Henry who's got Jenny strapped to the carrier on his belly and he's in the kitchen cooking up broth in the in dark why don't they ever turn on the lights in this show or this movie he drops a bunch of meat into the huge pot in the kitchen and it's like boiling she's staring at him but she's not staring at her loving husband she feels like she's staring at the grandpa who's taken over henry's human form and she's ready to get rid of him so that night henry's in bed because the man is constantly asleep he's a sleepy boy and she walks over to the bedroom and stands over him just standing there Oppa. no answer Harabuji, Grandpa. Hmm? Oh. Is it really you, Grandfather? Henry rolls over in his sleeping bag, and Julia just cuts to the mother fork and chase. Are you gonna kill my daughter? Are you gonna kill my daughter? I don't know. Wait, he's talking? Yeah. Ah! In his sleep! Bro, so, I don't wanna be recording this right now, live streaming this. <laughs> like, evidence, man. <laughs> So she locks the bedroom door for the night, triple locks that shit like she's a prison guard at ADX and she hovers over Jenny's crib, just rocking back and forth, repeating the same words over and over. Without dogs barking, without children crying, I want to live in peace with no one but you. Without dogs barking, without children. That's what the shaman said that grandpa said. And while she's saying it over and over again, she's tapping her finger on the blade of the kitchen knife, keeping herself awake. Julia does not even sleep for a single moment. By the time the sun comes up, Henry rolls into his sleeping bag and off the bed entirely. So he wakes himself up on the floor, but he notices something underneath the bed. He bangs on the door for Julia to unlock it. She walks over and the whites of her eyes are stained pink. The bottom lash line of her eyes look completely raw and red. She looks like she hasn't even blinked all night. She has never heard of a visine eye drop in her whole forking 30 years of living, okay? And she's smirking this creepy smirk like she's proud of herself. Henry's confused because he's like completely bypasses how terrible she looks and like passes over the talisman, the little sheet of paper that he found under the bed that the shaman gave them. Remember? Uh Oh yeah. She kept it. Why did you place this thing in our bedroom? Julia snatches it from him and starts freaking out because he crumbled it. Why did you pull it out? She immediately goes over to the table to unwrinkle it. She's like smoothing it out just like the way her mom did when they first brought it out. And she went from thinking this whole thing is goofy to being just like her mom. She's staring at it, but talking to Henry. Henry, I placed this there and it stayed next to you while you were asleep and you didn't even wake up once. You've been watching me all night? You didn't sleep? I think this talisman really works. Julia, go get some rest. Just leave that for later. Come on. She won't leave her precious talisman. So he picks her up, carries her into the bedroom. She's giggling and they actually have a happy moment for once. I don't think like they have had a happy moment since Jenny was born, which is I feel like relatable for parents, but I digress. So he lays her down on the pillow and tucks her into the comforter, kisses her on the cheek. And before he even closes the door, Julia is dozing off. He shuts the bedroom door and tends to his little princess Jenny. But then Julia wakes up. (gasps) She doesn't know what time it is. Thank God it's daytime. And she had a nightmare. She's about to freaking lose it. She had a nightmare that Jenny was dead. Okay, long story. Anyway, she rushes over to the crib to check for Jenny and Jenny's not in there. So what is the next normal place for you to check for your missing baby? She runs outside to the kitchen and opens up the freezer, then the fridge. She's rummaging through the freezer bins and nothing. And then she realizes there's still a huge pot boiling. That pot looks perfect for a one month old and it's still in a roaring boil. So she opens the metal lid with her bare hands burning herself and the bones and meat are shuffling around in the broth. And for a second, Julia sees a hand and she's about to grab it, but it disappears into the broth. She grabs the broth, the whole pot, pours it out onto the ground, gets on all fours, just rummaging through the boiling hot water and the broth, just looking for, I don't know if this is her dismembered baby. Oh my goodness. And that's when Henry walks out of the bathroom with Jenny after he just gave her a bath. He sees Julia on all floors, inspecting the beef bones, and his eyes are bugging out. What are you doing? That's not, that's boiling hot. No, let me clean it. Let me handle it. What are you doing? Are you okay? He rushes to put their baby in the crib, and while Julia stumbles to her feet, you know, she's numb. Henry's examining her, and Julia's looking at him like she wants to chew his head off. Henry sees her hands. They're completely raw. Both hands are covered in second-degree burns. They're the shade of my hands. (laughs) Just like this. Henry runs them over cold water and goes into the freezer for some ice. But while he's hunched over in the freezer, Julia grabs the now empty hot pot and bangs it over his head. He wakes up, 
duct tape tied up in the living room floor and a knife straight at his neck. His wife is trying to kill him. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. What do you want from me? Huh? Is it because you want to sleep with me, Harabuchi? What? She pulls out her jacket sleeve like she's losing it. She's like, okay, fine. Let's just do it and get it over with. Henry is like, Julia, stop. It hurts. Let go. She's slowly pushing the knife into his neck. It's breaking skin. There's blood slowly starting to ooze out. And she yells, tell me what you want then. Stop torturing me like this. Julia, this morning I got a call from the doctor. They're going to change my prescription. It's the medicine I told you about. I'm going to take the medicine and I promise I'm going to get better soon. So please, please stop this. Julia's eyes go even wider. She wants to believe him, but her brain quite literally cannot. She digs the knife deeper and deeper. Please stop it. Please, why are you doing this to me? I feel like I'm going crazy. I'm begging you. Out of frustration, Julia throws the knife to the side. She gets off Henry and leaves him there crying, still restrained by the tape. And then time passes. Henry's back at the sleep disorder clinic, sleeping in a little bedroom. And the doctor tells him, bruh, the new medicine's working. You're good. You've been good for months now. Like everything is good. You're sleeping good. No more sleepwalking. No more disorder. Everything's perfect. Well, it's all thanks to the medicine. At this point, I'd say it's safe to say that you fully recovered, the doctor tells him. You've Wait, been so through a lot. So this is months later. Yeah. And, and he's alone. Oh, okay. So, okay. Same goes for you, doctor, because of us. <laughs> and the doctor is reminded that Julia is not here. So uh, he's confused. Oh, right. It has, is your wife doing well? Well, she's currently hospitalized. Oh, well, I hope it's nothing serious, right? Well, her health has improved a lot. She's actually getting discharged today. So after the whole knife incident, he went on new meds and she got, she went into a mental asylum because like, that's crazy. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Like killing your dog in a sleep-induced murder is not means for a psychiatric institution, you know, situation. But putting a knife to your husband's neck is. I feel like that's sexism. I'm just kidding. <sighs> They're both unhinged. Like they both should be in there together holding hands, okay? But like what? So it's the day that Julia gets released. And if we calculate the length of Henry's mustache hairs, I'd say one centimeter is like a month, you know? One centimeter is a month? I don't know. So it's okay, been some okay. time, okay? So Henry goes with Julia's mom to pick her up from the mental hospital. But they're like, oh, she was discharged yesterday. And they say it so casually and they're like, ah! They try to call her. She's not picking up her phone. Now, they're both very, very worried. But the mom decides, the grandma decides to take Jenny, the baby. And Henry's going to go home and try to hunt down Julia on his own. He walks into his apartment. And it's... <laughs> it's really creepy it's like a satanic cult has taken over it looks demonic the whole house is completely covered with these shamanistic banners covering every surface the walls the couch the table the fridge the bathroom door not a single inch is left exposed the banners are like sticky notes just hanging everywhere there's red yellow it's just the whole house is creepy. I don't know why she bought like those TikTok LED lights. There's like a reddish orange hue to everything and it's just bizarre. It's bizarre. Henry slowly walks in, which is a bad decision. If I saw a cockroach in my house, I would leave the house. The house now belongs to the roach. If I see a satanic cult has taken over, I'm leaving my whole identity and I'm moving to a different continent. Like you got me messed up. I don't know why he's walking in. Anyway, he goes in and he's looking at all the details. He's trying to figure out what's going on, right? Wait, so he left the house and then he came back. The whole, whole house had a whole rental. Yeah. Okay. And Julia bursts out of the bathroom, but she's just like, walks out. You're home. What took you so long? Uh, ma'am, you were in a psychiatric hospital. Do not be acting like it's a normal Tuesday right now. She immediately grabs the remote, turns on the projector screen, which is now blood red. Like the wall is now blood red. And the whole room is just like crazy. Opa, sit down. What, what is all of this? She looks, she looks eager as if she didn't just escape a mental institution and just covered every square inch of the house with these shamanism like things. I know you're confused, but sit down first. Let me just explain. What's with the flowers? And she drops the flowers. He had bought her flowers because she was going to get out today. <laughs> Seriously, what is going on right now, Julia? Five minutes. Just five minutes. Julia goes over to the projector screen. It's like she's presenting something at work. Okay. Yeah. Look, Julia, I fully recovered. I'm okay now. The doctor just signed me off. I understand, but hear me out for a second. You know what they told me at the hospital today, Julia? They did a brainwave examination and the results came back normal. Please just, it's all over now, Julia. What could you possibly want me to hear? I'm about to tell you, just listen. 
tell me what, that a ghost has latched onto me? You're about to tell me that I'm possessed by a ghost? What is wrong with you? I'm losing my mind because of you. But ghosts aren't really a big deal, honey. They say people have 10 days to ascend to heaven after they die. And if they don't, they turn into ghosts. Henry looks like he's over it, okay? But she stops him. I said, sit down and listen. Henry reluctantly sits down because I too would be following the directions of someone who was released from a psychiatric ward and turned our house into midsummer. I too would listen to everything they're saying because that's crazy. And she clicks on the first slide of her presentation. It says October 25th. A few months ago, the downstairs lady came over to complain about the noise, saying that she had heard loud noises every night for a week before that. That was October 25th. So October 25th minus a week. Julia starts doing ghost math. So the loud noises starts at October 18th, right? But take a look at this. She clicks next on the presentation and it's Grandpa Park's death certificate. The old man downstairs died on October 8th, 10 days before the loud noises started. Where did you even get that? She ignores his silly question because of course she got it from her death certificate plug. What kind of dumbass question is that? Those who don't ascend to heaven within 10 days turn into ghosts. The old man died on October 8th plus 10 days is October 18th. The day you started acting like that is the day the old man turned into a ghost. Henry just throws his head back because he's like, what the fork? He's so over it. Like the ghost math is too much. She clicks on the next presentation slide, a red screen with the words, someone's inside. Gurley is like really doing the most with these blood red presentations. Like she really went into PowerPoint to use blood red slide. <laughs> like, okay. It's not even the default setting, you know? She had, to, she had to pick it. It was a creative choice she made. But at the end of the day, she's just a girl, right? October 25th, you said someone's inside. I already told you it's from a TV script. The line from the script is someone's inside the house, but you said someone's inside. So you're saying that I was referring to a ghost inside of me? Exactly. And she turns to the next slide, a collage of images of people with scratches all over their body. Possessed people feel tingling sensations throughout their body. Their skin itches. So they start scratching all over since the itching won't go away. And you know what's the first thing people do once they're possessed? They eat to regain their energy. But do you know what kind of food they prefer the most? Julia clicks to the next slide, another collage, but this time it's Korean men eating raw chunks of meat. Not even steak tartare, like raw meat. Bestie, where are you getting these mood boards? Because Pinterest could never. This, do you get it? By the way, Henry is like huffing and puffing and pacing around. He's like, this is crazy right now. Your behavior closely followed these patterns, Henry. So what's the first thing they do once they've regained their energy? They start seeking revenge. And what led the old man to hold a grudge against us? Huh? This next slide is a picture of Pepper. <laughs> RIP, you a real one. Okay. Isn't this something that you should know best? <sighs> All right, that's enough. That's enough, Julia. Is this enough? Tell me, do you believe me now? Or maybe you think I should be put back in a mental hospital, huh? Julia, it, it doesn't matter whether I believe you or not. That's because I fully recovered. Or in your terms, the ghost is gone, okay? It's all over. Julia stares at him blankly, okay? She clicks. And Henry's jaw drops. He's so confused. He can't look away. He starts walking towards the screen. What is this? It's a picture of Julia's mom praying on the side. And the shaman lady is fully standing in the middle of their entire living room. Their living room, which is now decorated with bright colors and textures. And like there's stuff hanging on all the walls. The shaman is wearing her pink traditional dress with the hood on it. Her arms are spread wide and there's a whole table of offering behind her. There's candles lit. Two men are sitting on the side with drums and instruments. And Henry is laying on the floor completely naked. A ritual in their house that he does not remember. The 49th day. The 49th day after the old man had died. It was carried out here while you were asleep. We did this. This girl is bonkers. That's me on the floor. That's right. You're insane, Julia. You're seriously insane. You've completely lost it. Wait, but how would, how does he not know? I think that's insane. Because yeah, I guess his sleepwalking, he like doesn't know anything. Oh. Hold on. The ritual. You said it's done. So you've already done with it. So what, it, it's over. The ghost is gone, huh? No, the old man refuses to ascend to heaven, so he still hasn't left this place. What? He's gone. He's gone, okay? Come on, Grandpa. Just. And then she tells him that he, they carved something into his back. They literally carved him, and I don't know why he didn't feel the pain or never saw the mirror, but there's like a skin carving in his back. A shamanism talisman to keep him safe. But she said it expires after 50 days. It's like a tub of yogurt. <laughs> so, and then souls, ghosts, if they don't leave after 100 days, you're stuck with them forever. 
Yeah. She's like, Henry, listen carefully. A ghost can no longer ascend to heaven after a hundred days. It'll linger here forever. Then we'll have to live like this for the rest of our lives. The old man said he wants to live with no one but me without dogs barking, without children crying. Okay. He's going to kill our daughter. Today marks the 100th day since you died. And if we don't drive it out today, if we don't drive it out today, there's just like way too many numbers. Okay. But like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what just happened. So now it's the hundredth day. The old man's been in Henry's body for a hundred days. And if he doesn't ascend, he can stay in Henry's body forever. But like, even if he leaves, I feel like the inscription on his back is going to stay. Anyway, regardless, it's a high stakes type of day. It's also like 15 minutes until midnight. So, so they got 15 minutes left. They got 15 minutes. Henry opens the door and he's about to get the out of there he puts on a jacket grabs his keys enough i can't take this anymore but while he's putting on his shoes julia grabs the family motto plaque the wood plaque and throws it over his head missing him but breaking the mirror behind him together we can overcome any obstacle if you're just gonna run away all the time why did you even bother making that plaque for me you said that being a couple means overcoming obstacles together but now you're saying that you can't take it anymore that you want to leave personally i feel like if one of us is possessed Mm-hmm. I feel like that's grounds for divorce. Like, I don't know if I'd be mad about it. Like, if I were possessed and you're like, babes, I got to go, I feel like I'd be like, you know what? It's fine. I can just talk to myself because I'm possessed. <sighs> you know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> but okay, whatever you say, Julia. Hey, if you leave me alone every time we face a challenge, that's putting it lightly. Why bother making that thing and hanging it on the wall? And the guilt trip works. Henry grabs the plaque, hangs it back on the wall, and he looks over at Julia and sits back on the couch. What do I have to do? Hmm? 15 minutes left, the climber starts, and she doesn't waste any time. She closes her eyes, takes a deep breath, turns off the light, walks over to Henry and sits in front of him, face to face. Listen to me carefully. Sure. She starts whispering in his ears, and we don't hear what she's saying, but his eyes are popping a vein. She leans back, and he just says, What? And he turns his head, scanning the front door, bathroom, kitchen, and he gets up and walks towards the fridge, opens the freezer door, leans down, and the neighbor's Pomeranian is frozen to death in the freezer. Ah! He looks over at Julia. Now we're even. You thought I'd just sit here without a fight? I'm willing to go as far as you are. Julia's convinced herself that she's talking to the grandpa now. She's like, that's your daughter's dog. I killed your daughter's dog. na 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 boo boo ah. Literally. Before she can say anything, Henry starts to vomit. He rushes to the bathroom to throw up in the toilet, but he looks over to the side and their neighbor, Minnie, is sweating, eyes closed, mouth taped shut, arms and legs tied up, held hostage in the bathtub. Henry crawls out of the bathtub because she's so shy. What are you doing, Julia? And who is this woman? Julia drags Minnie out of the tub and throws her in front of Henry. She rips off the tape off of Minnie's mouth and Minnie's screaming, Jimmy, Jimmy, where are you? Please save me, someone save me. But before Henry can even get close to help, Julia turns the the power drill right on next to Minnie's head. Minnie's screaming, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And she looks at Henry and she looks so uncomfortable. Appa, (laughs) dad, please save me. Because remember, the grandpa is on Henry's body, apparently, and the grandpa is Minnie's dad. So she's calling him dad, talking to her dad. But Henry's still there and he's fighting for that brain real estate. And he looks confused. He's like, lady, you look my age, okay? He's like, what? Please, dad, just leave. If you don't, I'm going to die. I'm going to die and Jimmy's going to die. And Andrew, my dog, is already dead. Dad, please just stop tormenting these people and leave. I'm, I'll make sure to visit you often and I'll bring Jimmy in and we'll do all the ancestral rites for you. Please, Dad. Julia drops the power drill and retapes Minnie's mouth shut. It's just blackmailing the ghost. Yeah, and Julia's like, listen to me. Huh? And she taps the power drill on the table. My daughter, Jenny, even if she's slightly hurt, whether it's your fault or not, it's not going to matter. If she trips on the street or catches a simple cold, your daughter is dead and she digs the power drill into Minnie's temple literally breaking skin and even your grandson I'm gonna kill them both Minnie's whimpering and crying through her tape mouth so answer me what Henry's like what am I supposed to say (laughs) yeah it's like a whole thing and she's like you're not answering me so she starts drilling into Minnie's head yeah so right now the feel Henry is still there yeah we don't know if there's a grandpa or not most likely not oh she's losing it so this is called sleep so a lot of people think it's a study on sleep deprivation oh yeah and there's blood 
and skin and just like everything. I was getting drilled. And under Henry's breath, he says, I'll leave. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'll leave. He screams, I'll leave. And Julia sh- stops, looks over at him. Henry is panting, scared for his life. But before either of them speak, there's a knock and it's the police outside the door. And Jimmy screaming, mom, are you there? And this is Henry's cue. He tackles Julia off of Minnie, throws the power drill to the side. He gets on top of her, restrains her arms. Why the f- did you do that? What is wrong with you? Julia is looking at him. It was you the whole time. Henry? What about the old man? And before Henry can respond, his voice changes. It gets lower, deeper. Fine. Fine, you crazy bitch. I'll leave, all right? You can tell that Henry is no longer there. Everything about his demeanor shifts. His posture, everything shifts. He looks over at Minnie. Sweetie, dad's leaving. Make sure you raise Jimmy well, right? And consider moving out of here. The world is full of nutcases. The old man has taken over. He shifts his feet and he's got his hands held behind his back. And he walks over to the wall and he sees a picture of Henry and Julia. (laughs) What's so great about that guy anyway? I don't know why he chose him. And then he walks over to the corner of the living room, facing the balcony doors. They're now covered with shaman banners and he dusts off his shirt and pants and he wags his hand up in the air and says, Let's get going. And through the reflection of Julia's pupil, we see the old man opening the balcony doors and walks out onto the deck and closes them behind him. And outside of what Julia sees, the room is still covered in banners and the human form of Henry is still there. But once the old man walks off, Henry's body topples to the ground and Henry just lays there. Julia scrambles over to him and he says, he's gone. He's gone, Julia, it's over now. Julia drops to her knees and she takes a quick glance at the time one minute before midnight and she makes a sigh of relief and falls into Henry's arms and says, see, we can overcome anything. Yes. And while Henry's there looking up at the ceiling, it zooms in on Julia's face and her eyes are closed. And right then and there, she falls asleep. Wait, okay. Is that the end? The end. Okay, so are you are we are we saying like we don't know the last part is actually real? Yeah, so there's a few different theories of what happened. You can take it like at face value, which is that it's just a paranormal thing. Like he was possessed by the grandpa. It's a whole thing. They finally drove the grandpa out. Yeah. Or it's called sleep. So he has a sleepwalking disorder. He did do these weird things. And because of that, it led her to be sleep deprived. And sleep deprivation is actually the scariest. She starts hallucinating, believing these things. And even the grandpa walking out into the balcony, it's seen through the reflection of her eyes because it's probably her hallucination. Yeah. Nobody else's. And he's an actor. Mm, mm, this is so much better so it's likely that he did have a sleepwalking condition he uh-huh. did kill their dog and shit yeah and it was bad but he got fixed but because she just sleep deprivation really made her lose her mind yeah 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 yeah, that, yeah. that's better yeah, that, yeah that's a better explanation yeah that made the most sense to me because like the face value one just didn't make sense and then the way that throughout the movie he just kept impersonating the grandpa a lot Oh, and he was yes. really good at it. Yeah. It was always like taking on his voice and stuff. Yes. And I was like, mm. oh, yeah, no, that's that's good. Yeah. Oh, that's good. This is very interesting. What are your thoughts on this one? It's good, right? And yeah. what's scarier? Like that made me think what's scarier? Sleepwalking? Because I always thought sleepwalking is scarier. Sleepwalking or sleep deprivation? What? Why? Okay. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Yeah, let me know in the comments. And I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys tomorrow for the next one. Bye.